To make a multi-rig piston, there are fundamentals that you must know in order to make the more complex ones as seen on screen. So let's start with the basics. The first thing that you want to do is add a bone at the pivot point, making sure to set the viewport display of the bone to in front. This will make it easier when making the rig. This bone will then need to be rotated 90 degrees in order to stop it from being mixed up with the other ones that we're going to add on later. Now we need to do the same, but for the other end of the multi-piston. Once we have both of these bones, we're going to add one bone at either end, making sure that they are both pointing at one another and starting from the tail of the bones we added before. The tail of the bone is this point for anyone who is unsure. These new bones are then needed to be parented to the bone closest to it, making sure the parent is as keep offset and not connected. The bones pointing to each other can then be given the bone constraint called damp tracks. To add this, you need to go into pose mode. This won't work in edit or object mode. Damp track works by keeping the tip of the bone pointed at the tail of the bone we enter in this constraint. In this case, it is the bone opposite that it is pointed at. Do the same for the other bone. So now we need to add a singular bone at the pivot point to control the middle part. Once added, I often resize this bone in order to keep it from being muddled up with the other bones. This bone then needs to be parented to the bone opposite and needs to have the constraint copy transformed. Then select the bone opposite the one that we just parented it to. Then change the influence to a value of 0 0.500 and this will keep it in the middle. To make the more complex rigs it's important to know what can be changed in order to achieve the wide variety. The first and easiest is having more segments in the middle. To do this you want to add a bone like we did before parenting it to the opposite bone but the only difference is you are changing the influence of the copy transform. You can add as many of these bones as you like. The final change you can make is by moving the location of your controller bones and as long as they are parented as we did for the basic version you can place them anywhere allowing for many different configurations as shown on screen. The last thing that you need to do is parent the objects to the bones and give them the right vertex group. If you found this type of video useful consider liking and subscribing as it helps me make more of this type of content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.